he is graduated from iit khadakpur from civil engineering like how he would have solved that problem or he had just skipped that problem so let me directly take you to that problem which was how many of you know that kota factory fame jitendra kumar also known as jitu bhaiya is also an iitian yes he is graduated from iit khadakpur from civil engineering branch and he has worked in various popular web series and movies such as panchayat and shubh mangal savdhan as well and i was curious that which question paper he gave in 2008 and while i was going through that paper i found out a quadratic equation for, uh, problem and i was thinking about like how he would have solved that problem and whether even he had solved it attempted it or he had just skipped that problem so let me directly take you to that problem which was there in j advance 2008 in jitu bhaiya's paper so the question looks like this and it is an assertion reason question okay so the question is a b c p q be real numbers and suppose alpha comma beta are the roots of quadratic equation okay so this quadratic equation has two roots alpha and beta and this quadratic equation again has roots alpha comma 1 by beta okay all right where beta square does not belong to this particular set so beta square is not having three values minus 1 0 and 1 okay now two statements are given to us statement number 1 says that p square minus 2 multiply p square minus q multiply b square minus ac is non negative that is first statement as statement number 2 says that b is not equals to p and c is not equal to q a okay and a b c d option says that first thing is we need to uh, uh, think about whether statement number 1 and 2 both are correct or incorrect and once we figure out okay maybe both are correct then whether statement number 1 is statement number 2 is correct explanation of statement number 1 or not okay so let us start with this particular problem so i have written the all the given information two quadratic equation first quadratic equation has roots alpha and beta second has roots alpha comma 1 by beta and beta square is not ha uh, having these three values okay so the very first thing i'm going to do is alpha plus beta i'm going to write from here minus 2p and alpha beta will be equals to q correct from here alpha plus 1 by beta is equals to minus 2b and alpha into 1 by beta that is going to be alpha by beta is c upon a all right and now let us uh, check the validity of statement number 1 which is p square minus q and b square minus ac is greater than or equals to 0 or non negative whether it is true or not that we need to figure out how will we do that so p value can you see this p value i can directly put in terms of alpha and beta that's the only option right now i can see okay so let us just convert this whole expression in terms of alpha and beta as much as possible and then analyze whether it is negative or positive or zero okay so p square minus q so p will be the value of p from here will be alpha plus beta upon minus 2 whole square so this is p square minus q where is q so q is alpha beta correct so this is the very first bracket now b square minus ac how do we reach to this particular uh, thing over here <laughs> so b square minus ac is actually Um, very not very direct, just like this expression. But what I can do is I can just create b upon a, okay? Because yeah, this is actually minus two b upon a, okay? Minus two b upon a, minus two b upon a. So b upon a and c upon a is something which I can like write directly in terms of alpha and beta. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a square common. So I'm going to have b square by a square. Minus one a is gone. C by a. Now I can clearly write this expression in terms of alpha and beta. How do we do that? So let me just erase it. B by a will be equals to alpha plus one upon beta upon minus two. Can I just erase it and write it over here, just as alpha 
plus 1 upon beta whole upon minus 2 and we have a square over here. Correct? Similarly, C by A is very simple. That is going to be alpha by beta. So, can I just replace this, this as alpha by beta? Okay. Alright. Now, let us just open it right away. So, this is actually going to be 4. Right? Minus 2 square is 4. So, alpha square plus beta square plus 2ab 2 alpha beta upon 4 minus alpha beta. Correct? This is the very first bracket. The second bracket would be alpha square plus 1 upon beta square plus 2 alpha beta upon 4 minus alpha by beta and a square over here. Okay? So, if I take LCM right away, what do I get? This is going to be minus 4 alpha beta. Okay? So, this is upon 1. If I take LCM, minus 4. So, plus 2 alpha beta minus 4 alpha beta will actually give you alpha square plus beta square minus 2 alpha beta. This is the very first bracket. Similarly, if I just, so this is actually alpha upon beta. Yes. Now, similarly, if I take LCM over here, this is 2 alpha by beta and this is going to be minus 4 alpha by beta. Plus 2 minus 4 will give you minus 2. So, this is a negative square again. So, alpha minus 1 by beta whole square and obviously in both the brackets 1 by 4 is there. So, 1, 1 by 4 I am writing outside because of the space and this is a square. Now, let uh, tell me one thing. This is also a perfect square. This is already a perfect square. This is already a perfect square. What does that mean? Perfect square is always, always non-negative. Okay, it is never ever negative. It can be 0, 0 when alpha and 1 by beta becomes equal or alpha. This is alpha minus beta whole square actually. So, if I just want to write, this is alpha minus beta whole square and by 4. So, again, if alpha and beta are equal, then it will become 0. If they are not equal, it will be positive. That means it can never be negative. What does that mean? That simply means that statement 1 is definitely true. Okay, so option D is wrong. Now, statement 1 is true. Okay, now we just only need to think about the validity of statement number 1. Okay, statement number, sorry, validity of statement number 2. Okay, so let me just uh, talk about validity of statement number 2. PA is not equal to B. This is your statement number 2. Can I show you? Statement number 2 simply means either this is not equal or this is not equal. Okay, all right. So P A is not equal to B or C is not equal to Q A. So, let us first talk about validity of statement 2. Then we will talk about whether they are like statement 2 is correct explanation or not. So, here mm -hmm. again P A is not equal to B. So, can I just completely write it now in terms of alpha and beta because statement 1 for statement number 1 this process was working for us. So, why not we apply in statement number 2. Apart from this, we, we don't have anything to apply in this question. So, P actually is not equals to B upon A. Now, B upon A, what is B upon A? So, B upon A will be alpha plus 1 by beta upon minus 2. Correct? And what is P over here? Alpha plus beta upon minus 2. Okay? So, we need to check. Now, minus 2, minus 2 cancel and also alpha and alpha is also getting cancelled out. That means beta is not equals to 1 by beta. What does that mean? Beta square is not equals to 1 and also beta cannot be 0 as well, which is already given to us that beta can never be, beta can never be minus 1, sorry, beta square can never be 1 and 0. That means this statement is actually true. Statement number 2 is actually true. Similarly, now we will check, right? The next half of statement number 2, C is not equal to QA. So, similarly, C by A is not equal to Q. This will make more sense because C by A value we are having. Alpha by beta is not equal to Q. Where is Q? Alpha beta. Again, again, how do we solve it? Please do not cancel alpha from both the sides. Rather, alpha beta minus alpha by beta is not equals to 0, right? Like this. Take alpha common. Then you have to write beta square minus 1 upon beta is not equals to 0. What does this mean? That alpha is not equals to 0 or beta square minus 1 upon beta is non-zero. 
This simply means that obviously beta is never zero. Okay, beta cannot be zero and beta square minus because denominator cannot be zero. Otherwise, this expression is not valid. Okay, so beta to definitely is non-zero and beta square is not equals to one, which is also inferring to this statement which was given to us. That means this is also valid statement as per the given equation, given information. Statement number two is also true, but while solving statement number one and statement number two, we do not encounter any intersection, any like uh, connection between statement one and statement two solution as well, right? So what does that mean? That statement number one and statement number two both are true, okay? And statement number two is not a correct explanation of statement number one. So for this particular question, statement actually option b for this particular statement option b is absolutely right okay all right so if you have liked this video please comment below and also comment which iitl celebrity you want to see next in this particular series this is me namrata signing off i'll see you all in next video